All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to give you a second example of uniform continuity by simply showing that f of x equals 1 over x squared is uniformly continuous on the interval 2 comma infinity. And again, the interval is very important because it turns out this function, for instance, is not uniformly continuous on 0 comma 1. And we'll show a variation of that in another video. On the other hand, so the fact that we have two here wasn't very special. The same proof, basically al almost exactly the same proof, works for the interval a comma infinity where a is positive. Now, what does uniform continuity mean? It just means that for all epsilon, there is some delta. such that for all x and y, for all x and y in your interval 2 comma infinity, if x and y are close together, then f of x and f of y are epsilon close. So x minus y less than delta implies f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. So again, the main thing is here the delta cannot depend on x and y. There has to be a universal delta that works for all the x and y's. That said, as, as I said in a previous video, uh, the strategy is the same as continuity. Calculate f of x minus f of y and try to fish out uh, x minus y from that. So let's do that. So again, part one, do some scratch work. Okay. So let's calculate f of x minus f of y. So in this case, 1 over x squared minus 1 over y squared. Well, the nice thing is, this thing can be put on a common denominator. So this becomes absolute value of y squared minus x squared over x squared times y squared. That said, x squared and y squared are non-negative, so we can remove the absolute values and just put them on the numerator. On the other hand, the numerator can be factored out very nicely. This becomes absolute value of y minus x times y plus x over x squared y squared. And now I would like to remind you, and again the interval plays a huge role, that x and y are in the interval 2 comma infinity, so in particular they're greater or equal to 2. And therefore since in particular, they're positive. x plus y is positive. So we can remove the absolute value also here. And therefore, we get y minus x times, uh, if we want, uh, y plus x over x squared y squared. All right. Now, this term is good. It's the term we have control over that we can set less than delta. This term is bad. It's the stuff we want to control and ideally make this a constant. Because remember, our delta can only depend on epsilon, not on x or y. But not a problem at all, so let's do a little bit of algebra here. So y plus x over x squared y squared. Well, that's just y over x squared y squared. So you just split it up, plus x over x squared y squared. Okay. On the other hand, notice there's a beautiful simplification here. The y here cancels out and the x here cancels out. And so you're left with 1 over x squared times y plus 1 over x times y squared. And again, our goal is to make this less than something. But this is great, because x and y are greater or equal to 2. So 1 over that will be less than or equal to something. 
So you see, in particular, x squared y, well, each term is greater or equal to 2, so the product will be greater or equal to 2 squared times 2, which is 8. And therefore, 1 over x squared y is less than or equal to 1 8. On the other hand, well, exact same thing with uh, 1 over x times y squared. So in particular, x times y squared is also greater or equal to 2 times 2 squared, which is 8. And therefore, 1 over x times y squared is less than or equal to 1 8. So if you add them up, then you get this whole term. So then y plus x over x squared y squared, again, which was 1 over x squared y plus 1 over x y squared, becomes less than or equal to 1 eighth plus 1 eighth. And that just becomes 1 fourth. And that's good, so we finally got something constant, which means that we're on the right track. And therefore, let's look back at our term. I think it was y minus x times y plus x over x squared y squared. Oh, okay. Aha! Uh -huh. I made the mistake in my previous try, but not anymore. Uh, y squared times x squared times y squared, and then this becomes less than, you don't know what's happening behind the scenes. You, I tried that three times, okay, with the exact same mistake. So this becomes less than, uh, or less than or equal to y minus x times one fourth, so y minus x over four, and now we can set this less than epsilon, because that was our f of x minus f of y, and therefore we get y minus x is less than 4 epsilon. And ta-da! We finally found our delta. And it's good because this is independent of x and y. It only depends on epsilon. And therefore, uh, let's just attack. So do our actual proof. All right, so uh, part two, our actual proof. So let's c epsilon be given. And let delta be for epsilon. Then for all x, x and y in the interval 2 comma infinity if um, x minus y is less than delta then calculate f of x minus f of y but we pretty much did that then if you want f of x minus f of y that is 1 over x squared minus 1 over y squared. And then we calculated that to be, uh, I think, uh, x, y minus x times uh, x plus y. Okay, or let me be y plus x over x squared times y squared. However, this term, remember, we estimated this to be less than uh, 1 fourth. So this is less than y minus x times 1 fourth, or less than or equal. Yeah. And now, remember, y minus x is less than delta, which is 4 epsilon. So this is 4 epsilon over 4, and this cancels out. And in the end, we get epsilon. Therefore, if epsilon is given, and there is a delta such that for all x in our interval, if x minus y is less than delta, then f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. And therefore we're done and we can stay home happy. All right, thank you very much.